So the first key lesson of the rich is that the rich don't work for their money. So when we think about that, it's kind of confusing in, in, in the aspect of saying, well, how do the rich make money, right? And how do I get to become rich? The, the fact of the word rich, I want to eliminate the negative connotation to the idea of rich because it's something that seems so far-fetched for most people. Uh, so the point of these lessons is to show how these are actionable lessons that we can employ in our daily lives to get us to a better financial position. Will it get you to wealth and becoming rich? That depends on, on, on each individual. The point is that each of the six lessons can be applied in your daily lives to get you further ahead to your financial freedom and, and essentially the happiness, um, an increased level of happiness in your lives. So the first lesson or the first uh, key lesson is that the rich don't work for their money. And each little bullet point explains the thought process behind that and I'll go through them. So the first one is that in essence, savers are losers. In today's reality, uh, if we just save money and put it aside, um, that money will not grow. And the idea of money growing is key because our money needs to generate wealth. If we look at the cost of living inflation, more or less 2% of year, if we do not invest that money, if that money just is saved somewhere, it is not growing, uh, it is actually uh, declining at a rate of inflation, number one. Number two, in the savers uh, are losers, is that if we look at the generations previous uh, to the millennial generation or um, the baby boomers, essentially saving money was a way to protect and have money for the future. Uh, the world was a different uh, world back then. Uh, financial realities were different. Interest rates were different. Uh, growth rates were different. Real estate values were different. In today's reality, if we just save our money in, a, in guaranteed investments, in interest-bearing investments, we see how low the interest rates are. So we cannot, we can no longer just be savers because it will not uh, get us to financial freedom uh, any quicker. So therefore, we must invest. And when I say invest, we must invest in assets that produce income. The key is that as we're saving our money, picture these each dollar as a soldier. Okay, Each soldier must be deployed and invested to produce income because that income needs to be working and generating, uh, being generated while you're sleeping, while you're working, while you're away. So you have to treat each dollar as a soldier that needs to be working for you by creating income in income producing assets. That is the first lesson as to how we move towards financial freedom. Okay. And that is uh, strictly linked to time versus money. The paradox of time versus money is something that most of the middle class is, is stuck in. Okay. And it's one of the key links to the rat race. Uh, most people get a job once they finish school. Uh, get a job once they finish a trade and all they do is exchange their time for a paycheck. So uh, if we work 40 hours a week multiplied by hourly rate and that's the amount of money that we're exchanging our time for. So we each are um, agreeing to exchange money for a belief of what our time is worth. In doing so, we are always uh, directly linked to the rat race. Why? For the point that comes right after. The more we earn, the more we consume. Everything in society is linked to consumption. So in essence, when we get our money, so this is once we save, but if we look at the steps before, we earn a certain salary, right? Part of it goes to taxes, to the government, which we have no choice. Then we go to fixed expenses, right? So our rent, our mortgage, so on and so forth. Uh, the issue is that what we should be doing next is we should be saving. The issue is that most people don't do that and they do this instead. So they'll do this first and this second if there's any money left over. And a lot of us blame ourselves for doing this, but it's society's structure and the way marketing is geared towards, towards us that helps us consume. And as we increase our salary and as we move up the corporate ladder, the rat race becomes all the more uh, of an entrapment feeling. Why? Because we earn a higher salary and therefore we increase our consumption um, almost proportionally to the increased salary. We buy a bigger home, 
we buy a bigger car, we take better vacations, uh, we go to restaurants that are a little bit more expensive. Uh, and therefore, the, the net delta, the remaining money for saving, is virtually the same as when you had your previous salaries. So, uh, big issue here is that consumption needs to come after taking care of fixed expenses and after saving, which is not the case for most people. Why? Because the more I save and the less I consume, the more I can invest in income producing assets that create income while I sleep. Example, real estate, example, a business on the side, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, the last point that I'll mention in, in the first lesson is the burn rate. Okay. So the burn rate, what does that mean? It's your fixed expenses, your cost of living in essence. So what does it take for your household? whether you have a family, whether you're an individual, what does it take for you to live every month? So that's your cost of living. Fixed expenses, you can include variable expenses, savings. So every month I need X amount of money to take care of all uh, my financial matters. And the idea is that the more you protect your burn rate, the lower your burn rate is, the easier it will be to eventually get out of the rat race. For example, if your burn rate monthly uh, or let's go annually, it's $30,000 a year net. So I need $30,000 a year to pay for my mortgage, to pay for my taxes, to pay for some vacations, to pay for food, car expense, uh, a bit of long-term savings, etc. Let's assume $30,000. Well, how can I save money, invest it to create income producing assets that can help subsidize that burn rate over time, where it, down the road to get to financial freedom, if you can generate $30,000 a year from passive investments, your active job, your, your salary job, um, is no longer tied to the rat race. You can then eventually choose to do something that you want to do and not have to exchange your time for money.